afternoon, ladies and gents. It's Money Bags reporting from the PDL and the fly department downstairs in the shop on beautiful Oiling Sound Co. So, we get to talk about my fishing obsession as of sorts, the false albacore. Love albies. So much fun for the inshore or uh, actual shore guys. There's nothing better. They fight so hard. They're beautiful coloring. Um, they're very finicky. So, you know, you feel like you've accomplished something when you get these guys. Let's start off with the uh, the vessel. You know, I am a proud owner of a 10.6 PDL myself. I got mine in the Photic. I absolutely love it. These are for salt water. These are for fresh. 10.6. Um, they make a 12 foot and the big water, which is I believe 13.2, um, which are a little bit more um, salt water specific. This is really nice for its stability. For its length, is incredible. Um, as the name implies, it's 10 foot six, so just about 10 and a half feet long. Um, very stable because its width is incredible. Uh, the speed in which you can cruise in one of these guys with minimal effort is pretty incredible. I use mine, like I said, every week, uh, whether it's freshwater or salt water. But for this instance, is we're going to use it for targeting albies. Um, having one of these is absolutely critical for not spooking fish. Uh, center consoles, maybe twin outboards. You know, albies are known for being very spooky. If you get within a certain amount of proximity with like running motors or a big bow, you run uh, extremely high chance of spooking these fish and putting them down, making it much harder for you to target them. Uh, so having a kayak of any form, I highly recommend getting a pedal drive. Um, just for mobility, being able to keep an eye on the fish and keep a rod in hand uh, while you're bridging that gap to catch them is absolutely invaluable. You know, you might only have a couple of shots at these fish in a day, so maximizing your chances is absolutely critical if you want to have any kind of success. Um, you know, for the near shore, inshore guys, these are going to do totally fine. Uh, I've definitely gone out on a little bit of chop, use safety. Um, that being said, safety wise, having some kind of PFD. Uh, whether it be like the standards or maybe something a little bit nicer like these inflatable Mustangs is really really nice a slim profile so while you're fishing it's not affecting your mobility um, But keeping you very very safe, which is absolutely critical These are obviously a little bit more expensive, but very nice for the fishermen. It's a good investment um, This thing I think I believe is going for 250 We have them in stock in the outdoor center. Jake would love to help you we can get you all rigged up for something a little bit uh, more basic, but still um, safety is kind of critical here. It's like a standard, relatively low profile. We got lots of pockets for the fishermen. Um, nice color. I like this. You know, it's pretty nice. Um, you know, safety is kind of critical with these. That is obviously a little bit nicer, but this gets you out there, keeps you safe, and for um, for considerably less money. What was the price back here? For 179. So you you know you're cutting the price down 100 bucks and still staying safe, still looking good. Lots of storage here, beautiful little outfit because safety is critical. Um, you know, weather changes in salt water very quickly um, and I'll be fishing, you're probably gonna have pretty close proximity to other boats. So staying visible, um, whether these are usually reflective um, and just being safe, you know, if anything did ever happen and I'll be madness, people can uh, not use their total field of vision and everybody's super hot to get on top of them so making sure that you're super visible having a light pole on the back of this um, I try to use like a very visible or a high reflective hat you know uh, sun shirt usually of, of a bright color just because if it is two foot chop one of these kayaks can disappear in the trough of that wave um, and you want to make sure everybody out there in their center consoles or whatever um, can see you very well. Um, going away from, from the safety and the vessel side of things, storage, I'm bringing usually uh, you know a small backpack worth of uh, worth of timber and tackle. Uh, for albies I usually have like my go-to little epoxy tray, relatively small, we don't need anything super crazy. Um, in one of my little side cubbies here, along with my pliers, um, and I keep, you know, like my, my things I need to get to really quick, 
Uh, I like to have the ability to change my epoxy color, size, maybe go to soft plastic, a little micro jigs um, really quickly. So having those things being accessible to you is critical. Um, like we said, you only maybe get 10 casts at solid fish in a day. You definitely want to be able to maximize your shots, whether it be color or size or whatever it may be. Um, when having one of these gecko bags, really, really nice, it's totally waterproof. You can put your phone on it so you can still get pics. Um, you can put a rest of your terminal tackle. This little pouch would fit my LV tray perfectly. Um, and then if you're spending the whole day out there on the water, you can pack your lunch in this, pack your rain jacket. Um, like I said, you definitely want to put your phone in here because you want that to be safe. Um, having something like this size is really, really nice. And then when you're loading up your yak, you can just throw it over your back. Nice, comfortable padded straps here. Only 50 bucks, so I'm probably going to be copping one of these things. Really nice. Um, perfect size. for fitting your little cubby back here along with your net. Love those guys. Alright, let's get to the fun part. Let's get to like the lures, the reels, the rods, the line. This is what gets my blood pumping other than just the fish, you know? Um, so let's just crack in the lures because there's a million of them out there. Bunch of different colors, bunch of different sizes. I just grabbed a couple of my favorites here. Um, there's obviously going to be ones that I'm missing. There's, you know, there's always something changed up. But if I had to go out with a couple, if I just had these, I'd be happy as a clam. I know we did a little video on these the other day, but can't hurt to do another one. Um, these are the new Mighty Fish Epoxies. We just got these in the shop the other day. Jake and I did another video, uh, like a new arrivals on these. Um, but these are just some of my favorites. Uh, if I just had to pick a handful of them, these are what I choose. This is the half ounce silver. So I really like this, especially when the bay anchovies, the silver and the olives are going to be more prominent. Um, earlier in the season we had more peanut bunker, so more the, the bones, the glows, uh, the pinks. You know, I'm going to throw more when the peanut bunker around. So a nice little silver here, a little bit more natural. Um, this is a little bit bigger option. So when casting distance maybe is a little bit more paramount, or the bait is a little bit bigger. Uh, you do find peanuts, you know, they can be the four to five inch range something a little bit larger this pink pink is always I, I think that if you ask a dozen albie guys probably nine of them are going to say pink is might be their favorite uh super productive i think that yeah maybe they don't imitate uh the natural color of the bait fish but i think a lot of the time when there's a massive school of bait fish you know you have uh, a million peanut bunker and a big school pushed up throwing another silver in there just disappears into the school Having something that stands out a little bit, maybe just gets their attention, uh, will help you hook up a little bit more, you know? Which is my theory behind the pinks. This is the small pink. The small pink has been my most effective albi catcher this year. Um, the half ounce, three eighths ounce uh, has been the key. And honestly, with having the kayak, you can bridge the gap. So I don't need casting distance all the time. Sometimes it's more about presentation than it is about just uh, covering water you know they're more finicky if you present the right size uh, imitation it's going to do you better than just covering twice the water by having a heavier lure and larger size so little pink has been my number one deliverer this is the chicken scratch uh this is the pink scratch so this is uh the pink that is one of my favorites and then a green chartreuse so it's like a little bit natural and unnatural at the same time um i know a lot of guys at the shop this is their number one favorite so um, definitely cop these guys and then going back to the half ounce the glow color um, I try to generally if I can go smaller and, and get the distance of the cast out of them I try to stay with the smaller um, to get away from the mighty fish because we're not just gonna play favorites all the time deadly dicks I know everybody's got a deadly dick uh, I just know it you know whether it's just you know the striper guys or whatever these small ones are phenomenal. The absolute classics, they've been around since the dawn of time. Um, sometimes it's the classics uh, work, you know, that they haven't been working for this long because they don't catch fresh. So, uh, highly recommend the Dilly Dicks. Um, this is, I don't even know what they call this. This is the rainbow color. So, it's kind of like a green, silvery flash, uh, holographic kind of finish to it. Um, another classic, been around since the dawn of time, Crippled Herring. I mean, three ounce ones have been slain in the canal for 
probably double, triple as long as I've been alive. These little ones, this is like a, I don't know if the camera, this is a nice camera, but I don't know if it's gonna pick this up. It is a crippled herring pearl. So this is like a pearly pink, silver color. I don't think the camera's really gonna do it justice, but this is a very um, accurate, this or the silver is a very accurate body shape of the peanut punker. Um, and I believe that this kind of gets slept on. So it's gonna be like a money bag slept on Albi lure, you know? Uh, classic people just, they, they go, I wouldn't say they're getting caught up with the foxies, but it's kind of like sometimes the old school fashion is just matching the hatch better and they work great. So don't sleep on the, the uh, crippled herrings. And, you know, seven bucks, it's class. You know what I mean? It's class. These Savage Gears, this is another great catcher for me. Um, this is like a chartreuse. And I do feel like sometimes like this little baby sand eels, they're almost like a brighter green. So it kind of like stands out to me. They're almost like this neon kind of color. So um, I will say that I usually get rid of the swivel and the split ring on the nose of these Savage Gear ones. Um, but I love the color, uh, relatively decent hook for, for a stock one, you know. Um, that, but this color, I definitely kind of catches the money bag's eyes. Another little slept on one, Cape Cod Classic. R.I.P. Runzi. The little tiny Runzis, these are fire. Everybody sleeps on them. Um, I think a little bit maybe because they're throwing a little bit heavier rod and you need to get a little whippier rod and maybe lighten up your braid and these things will cast really well. Um, and when they're finicky, these things work phenomenal. So we got my three favorites. The silver is probably number one, followed by a quick pink, you know, the same color as the Poxies. And then this is like a a new kind of green with the silver flash. This is really good. I haven't fished this one, but it just looks super good. So, um, and again, five bucks. These kings work. The silver is killer, schooly in the spring too. So uh, maybe if you cop them now, you have them for the schooly season. Thinking ahead, you know. Uh, another style of plastic is my favorite of mine. It's little baby squids. I have brought these up in numerous videos. I know these have cameoed in their schooly videos and spring fishing videos. Uh, silver is probably my number one. I think it's probably a solid, very solid number two. These have a nice weighted hook in them, so they cast better than you would expect. I use the big ones out at Monomoy to incredible success for, for Albies. Uh, these are these are doing the ticket. Um, very much like an Albie snack, but I feel like they cast a little bit better. Um, having that weighted hook, these things will send it a mile. So there's the schoolie rod. Again, incredible for bass too. Just very versatile, affordable bait. Bill Hurley again, Cape Cod made. Love it. Um, some reels. So we're gonna do a we're gonna do a budget setup, and then we're gonna do a baller setup. So the budget setup is actually a reel that I have recently acquired. This is a new Shimano Nasky. Uh, I was extremely impressed by it. First time I fished it, I had it on the water for 20 minutes, got a 12 pound Albi Apple Koi. So uh, yeah, needless to say, I had to chase it down. I probably hooked it 15 feet from my kayak and it dumped like three quarters of the spool of this thing. Absolutely the most fun. Drag clicker sounds great for all you Avi guys. The thing sounds sweet. And a hundred bucks. So uh, this is a 3000 size. You could use this for largemouth bass fishing, which is what I'm going to do. Do a little rod swap and this thing's going to do double duty for me. I was incredibly impressed by the drag, incredibly impressed by the smoothness and dare I say the new aesthetics looks wise of the new Nasky thing looks gorgeous. Silver, it's kind of like a gray, dark blue. I don't even know, but gorgeous. Love it. hundred bucks. Can't beat it. So it's my birthday is rolling up. Bill's going to do me a solid. He's going to buy me one of these bad Larry's. So this is a new twin power, uh, 5,000, you know, most 5k is a little bit bigger than our 3k here. Uh, but we could put 20 pound braid on it, maybe 15 on that to get a little bit better casting on it and get the line capacity back. And uh, as many people do know, the Shimano 5000 reels are the same body as the 4K, a little bit deeper cut spool. Um, so this could do double duty for some nice large, or um, some nice bass action too. Um, but this is just beautiful. It's incredible, I don't even know how to tell you how smooth this thing is. This goes forever. Love the EVA foam knob on it super light um and just an incredible reel if you want to treat yourself this is probably what i would you know pull out a little bit right all right so and then uh the line to spool them up with this is the uh the daiwa eight strand love it 
Um, I put the 15 pound on my little Nasky 3000 um, with the intention of using it for, for largemouth and for freshwater fishing as well. But also because when I start throwing those lighter epoxies, having this 15 pound is going to send that 3 8 a lot better than maybe, you know, a guy that's using a bass setup that has 30 pound braid on it. So, um, you know, my leader is pretty much always 15 pound. My braid is 15 pound. I'm not really worried about breaking it. Um, and then with the 3K reel, you can use a little bit lighter setup. It's a little bit more enjoyable to fish. And I get my line capacity back. So having the 3000 size, if I put um, 15 pound on, I use straight braid, no backing, and I got 180 yards of on that reel. So I feel pretty happy about it. Uh, I haven't gotten spooled yet. I hope I do. Maybe for the 5Ks, um, five or 4,000 size reel, you can get away with 20 pound braid. Um, this is you throw on the 7 8 ounce epoxy. This is going to be perfectly fine. You're going to get more than enough line on any 3,000 to maybe 5,000 size reel. Um, I wouldn't really go over 20 pound just because the lures that you're going to throw are going to be very light. In the fall here, we can have windy conditions and casting distance can be paramount. You know, uh, being able to cover a little bit more water can make the difference between getting three albies in a day and getting seven albies in a day. So if if that makes the difference, then that's what I'm doing. Uh, so from the line that we're putting on the reels, let's go to the leader. This is this is the only leader that I've been using for albies in the last three years. I absolutely love it. Um, this is 15 pound Seaguard Gold Label. I love Blue Label. I use it a lot. It's very popular. Everybody knows Blue Label. The thing is that for albies that are very very finicky, we want to get the the smallest line diameter that we can possibly get for visibility wise. Um, this, I can run 15 pound. I used to go down to 12. But this, at 15 pounds, is the same diameter as my blue label at 12. So now I can not bite my nails as I get a huge albie, and I don't have to worry about breaking it off at the yak. Issues because I'm not running super light leader, and I'm still getting the breaking strength. The diameter is the same. So um, this is what I would highly recommend. And then lengthwise leaders, Make them pretty long. Um, having 15 pound also keeps I tied direct, so I usually use a uni to uni or an all bite knot from my braid to my leader because my leaders are. I usually do a full arm's length. Um, so what six to seven feet around there. So I know for a fact that my my leader knot is coming probably two to three guides down on my rod. I want to keep that knot as small as possible. And in doing so, I can't run a swivel because you start casting as hard as, you, as you're going to at these albies, and that swivel is going to take the the, um, the insert on your guide clear now, and it's going to do you in. It's going to cut your braid. You're done for it. That, that just is no good. So um, I highly recommend just tying direct for the leader length. Um, two solid options for for leader to epoxy. I will tie a loop knot, a non-slope loop knot, which is basically an overhand knot, um, and then you're wrapping around the main line. It cinches down onto that overhand knot and gives you a little bit, um, uh, a little bit more action on the epoxy. And um, obviously for the spooky fish, usually I run TA clips. My other option is that I will run the freshwater tactical angler clips. They are only 25 pounds. You do have to be aware that is a 25 pound clip. If you crank your drag down, you might open the clip. The fact of the matter is I got a 15 pound leader, I got a 25 pound clip. My leader knot is probably gonna break before my clip breaks. I just uh, run appropriate drag. Everybody wants to do this thing scream anyway. Um, but those are really nice, especially in the morning because I'm trying to figure out what these things are feeding on and what the primary colors of the day is gonna be. So having, having the ease of being able to change the size, color, Whatever I may do, soft plastic, on the fly, is kind of critical. So I will use the little freshwater tea clips in the morning, and then I will switch them off after I figure out what they're kind of feeding on, and just tie direct with my loop knot to not spook the fish, and still have the, the hookup ratio. So that is my leader, that is my braid, these are my reels, let's go to the rods. Oh, I actually own both of these. I've highly recommended both of them in the past. This is a TFO, this is a seven foot, medium light. Um, I believe this is, yeah, rated a half an ounce. The half ounce or the three quarter ounce is probably where I really wanna be. 
um, for having fun and being able to cast these things. Uh, really, you don't need a rod that's rated over a maximum an ounce and a half because you're throwing seven, eight ounce epoxies. Anything really a higher rating than that. Um, with most rods, you're going to kind of sacrifice the action. If you don't load the rod with these light lures, you're not going to cast it very well. I believe these TFOs, we got tons of them in stock. I think they're around 200 bucks. Yep, 179 for the medium light. So saving deal. Love the cork. Looks classic. The little cut through to the rod blank here looks really nice. Um, beautiful rod. Love it to death. Under 200 bucks. Can't say no. Another rod that I highly recommend is um, the Saint Croix Triumphs. Let me let me yeah let me spin it around. Um, I love these rods. I use the Saint Croix Triumphs growing up as a kid in the surf all the time, never blew one up. Great five year warranty from St. Croix on these guys and 135 bucks. You know, aesthetically, they used to be um, like a black and gold finish with the wraps and now there's like this dark, dark uh, kind of emerald green, with a little bit of lighter green accent. I think aesthetically it looks really, really nice. Um, well, I would say that's pretty much everything we can talk about for Albies. If you guys want to talk more, because literally I could go for days. We're running out of um, storage space on the camera. Uh, come into the shop, you know, or, or uh, hit Jacob online. You know, we'll uh, we'll bounce back and forth about Albi questions or just really anything in general. Um, I am an open book. There are no stupid questions. That's the way I work. Um, so you guys have any questions, come in to the Goose. Come see your boy Money Bags or any of the staff here will be more than happy to help you guys out. I, uh, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you.